Kenneth D. Williams, and I'm here on Father's Day 2008 at the U.S. Capitol behind me. And the reason I'm here in front of this microphone is I have a story to tell as a uh, alienated father, a father who's been uh, railroaded out of his child's life by the U.S. court system. So, perhaps you people are not convinced that there is sexism. Perhaps you do not believe that we have been indoctrinated by patriarchal lies since the day we have been born. But I have a document in my possession that will prove otherwise. No. <laughs> donor makes a man a biological dad. Okay, that's right. Father. But does it make him financially responsible for the child as well? For Jana Minns and Deborah Morantz of Santa Fe, New Mexico, Kevin Zernig was their man. In 1994, Jana gave birth to a boy. According to court documents, the lesbian couple and the donor dad came to an agreement. The women would be primary custodians of the child, but Kevin would serve as a male role model, and he would not be financially obligated to support the child. But within months, the same-sex partnership broke up. And in the aftermath of the split, Jana kept custody. She and Kevin stayed friends, and he even fathered a second child for her. But for the last eight years, Jana and Kevin have been involved in a court battle. A bitter dispute initiated when Jana suddenly sought child support payments from Kevin for both children. He argued, in part, that he was not required to pay any child support because he was a sperm donor. Jana felt Kevin was both sperm donor and doting dad, and as such, obligated to pay child support. So how did this legal drama end? The court ruled that because Kevin has taken an active role in raising the children, he is liable for child support. Cruiser cams have also proven to be a lifesaver in defending the actions of police. These videos may look routine, but they certainly aren't to officers who are falsely accused. The assault swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guys. She accused him of taking her out of the car, frisking her, sexually assaulting her, and placing her back in the car. When I stepped out of the car, he proceeded to frisk me on the side, pat me on, pat me on my chest up here, and then he fondled my breast. I believe it was fondling. I don't believe it was frisking. He patted me on my stomach all the way down, and over my dress, he caressed my vagina. I feel very, very very violated. So what if I told you that I've seen the videotape of this incident in its entirety from the time that you were stopped to the time that you left the scene? Would that change any of your statement that you just told me? Yeah. They then accused her, of course, of lying and making a false report to this incident. Finally, she admits that she lied, that she fabricated the story. Why would you do something like this to somebody who didn't do anything to you except write your ticket? I'll explain why. I would have been driving a Jaguar if I had been driving a Mercedes or anything along those lines. I would have never been stopped. U.S. feminists talk about international women's issues all the time. This country continues to bristle under any real, messy, passionate, possibly angry conversation about the legacy of race, racism in this country. Now, the NBA definitely has a larger fan base than the WNBA, but considering the fact that they have probably twice the amount of airtime and media attention, it makes sense. Let's focus on Dr. Laura for this week. Um, said that if a man cheats, it's actually his wife's fault, which is pretty much the most ridiculous thing I've heard in a couple of years. Fuck you, U.S. Army, for awarding the Silver Star for heroic acts in battle uh, to a female soldier, and then subsequently removing her from combat. The rates of domestic violence and rape are still unacceptable. I would have been driving a Jaguar. If I had been driving a Mercedes or anything along those lines, I would have never been stopped. The rates of domestic violence and rape are still unacceptable.
Good evening. I'm Christine Johnson. And I'm Chris Raggy. She's been kicked out of college and is now facing possible criminal charges. Yes, the woman who wrongly accused five men of rape is hiding out. And tonight we know why she took back her horrific story. The rates of domestic violence and rape are still unacceptable. The turning point was when she was confronted with the fact that there may exist a video of some or all of the incident, the woman began to reveal the truth about what happened. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You know what? I don't feel like reading insults over and over and over again. Fuck you. Uh, we're here to promote an awareness of father's rights in this country, or the lack of father's rights, I should say. Nine years in the, in the family court system of Fairfax County. This is nine years of my court documents in this large three-ring binder. The injustice, the humiliation, the degradation, uh, it was just mind-boggling for me. My name is Marsha Maines. I'm here today to speak about Shaft at Shadwell. A young boy at 16 who was pursued by a local sexual predator. Um, there are assumed to be men today who are sexual predators, but there are female sexual predators as well. She was 19, he was 16. He, for his 16th birthday, he was offered the opportunity to enjoy the wonders of her body. And he did, along with six other people. And when he turned 18 and he became of legal age, she decided that he needed to marry her because she was a good Southern Baptist girl and her daddy expected her to marry anyone that she brought home to meet the parents. He refused and a couple of months later ended up becoming a father and was told that if he didn't marry her, she would do everything in her power to ruin his life forever. Um, here we are almost 20 years later. He's on his fifth incarceration by the DCSC of Virginia. They have falsified documentations. Uh, she has submitted falsified information under oath and then testified in direct contradiction to those statements under oath in court. Um, what I'm really here about today is talk about child support and how it is the, my belief, the purpose of the federal government and the state government's job, what they are trying to do is create a new form of slavery or institute a new state of poundage, and they're using non-custodial parents to do this. The Declaration of Independence states, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The solution, therefore, is not to reinstate fault divorce, but to remove the incentives which prompt parents to leave the family. Remove incentives which exploit the selfish human desire to gain control of the children and family assets. Remove federal policy statutes like VAWA, Title IV-D, Social Security, which promotes sole custody for mothers. Get this in front of a wandering cauldron of politically incorrect commentary. I'm not going to get into the argument talking about feminists want female superiority, not equality, blah, 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 because that's already obvious. No charges will be filed against a 34-year-old woman and a 14-year-old girl who police say falsely claimed they were raped. 7 News reporter Lance Hernandez is live in Brighton where the district attorney made that decision today. And Lance, why no charges? Well, the district attorney, Mike, says that the confessions are inadmissible in court because in getting those confessions, police told the accusers they wouldn't be charged. I think the district attorney should be very upset that they can't file charges. Residents we talk with are not happy. I think that they should be charged with fines and with jail time for false allegations of such a sexual assault and such a violent nature.
fix it or fuck off.